Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining session seven Nectari webinar series, Excel add-in tips and tricks. Um, we'll be giving a couple of minutes for everyone to join and then we'll begin the session. Thank you for your patience. All right, we are two minutes into the session and it uh, looks like a lot of people have already joined the session. So we will go ahead and begin the session today. So once again, welcome everyone to the last session of Nectari webinar series for this season. Uh, that would be Excel add-in tips and tricks. Um, just to give you a brief introduction about myself, my name is Jasdi Bogal and I'm the pre-sales uh, BI consultant uh, for Nectari Solution. And uh, I'll be walking you through this product today and also the the predominantly the feature which is the Excel add-in and showing you the various uh, tips and tricks that we'll be uh, seeing in the session today. So what we will be covering today in the session, uh, we'll be discovering several ways to make the tedious reporting in Excel a much smoother experience with the help of Nectari's Excel add-in. And uh, the various points that we will be looking at would be how to maintain, easily maintain the reports uh, with the help of the parameters. Uh, we'll be having a look at uh, the configuration parameters which can be set right on, this, uh, on the report and then how we can uh, use them to, uh, you know, help us, you know, easily maintain the reports. And then also how to enhance the report performance with the help of a reference configuration. Uh, that's one very powerful uh, feature that Excel add-in comes with, uh, which uh, reduces all the lags in the, in the loading of the reports and makes the whole experience much faster and smoother. And we'll also be looking at uh, how to use multiple formulas within the same cell and quick access to the desired data using the profiles. Um, and also with the help of pivot tables, which is also one of the tools which we get right out of the box with Excel add-in, uh, we'll be looking at uh, how we can use this feature uh, to have the access to the data anywhere and at any time and much more, uh, and which will be included in this session. So to begin with, I'll quickly go ahead and switch to my Excel report right here. So this is a, a sample template that we have actually created just to uh, work on the, these reports today and to take you through uh, three different reports that we'll be working on. So the first one being the income statement. We'll be creating a new income statement report with the help of uh, the add-in tools which we get right out of the box, all of these different tools. And this particular report we'll, we'll be creating with the help of formula visit. Then we'll switch to the next report, a trial balance report, which we also will be creating right from the scratch. And for this particular report, we will use another feature, which will be the data extraction. And finally, we'll also be creating a sales report with the help of pivot tables. And also, we'll be covering everything which comes along uh, with the help of uh, Nextari Excel add-in, uh, which we will be employing uh, into making of these reports. Also, to, just to begin with, I will quickly show you uh, one of the hidden uh, files that we have, uh, one of the hidden sheets. Uh, just a moment, please. Here. I do not want to hide the main menu, but I want to unhide the parameters sheet right here. All right, so this is the particular, uh, just a back end hidden sheet that we are actually using just to put some of the information right here, which is actually getting linked to the files and to the sheets right here. So right now we are looking at company description and company code. This is in fact a list which has been extracted from the ERP and then linked uh, to the trial balance report. Also, we have the generic list of the months with their numbers, uh, which they have, and then we have included both of these in the trial balance report to have, uh, you know, to also leveraging the VLOOKUP feature of Excel just to create a, a list like this. So, just to begin with, we can actually organize our uh, hidden thing uh, are some of the information which we do not really necessarily need on our main reports in a, a hidden sheet like this and then uh, connect these to the main reporting sheets uh, and then make them talk to each other. 
So I'll quickly go ahead and hide this one. And we'll come to the first worksheet, which is the income statement. Now in this particular worksheet, like I explained before, we'll be using the first tool that we see right here, which is the formula visit. So now the various things that we will see is uh, the current year, current year for the current month, uh, the year to end amount, and these various fields, which we'll be filling. We'll be seeing how easy and quick it is to create um, an income statement report like this just in a matter of a few minutes with the help of formula visit. So let's begin. Um, I'll quickly go ahead and uh, also show you what ex what else do we actually have in this report which we are not seeing right at this point. So if we look at these little corners right here and then on the top, we have the configuration parameters. So this is how uh, we can also set up our worksheet just to put this information which we can actually put into the formulas and might not need them later on just to be shown on our worksheets. So this way we can simply expand them, use them in the formulas and then uh, put them back into their little uh, closets right there. What we are looking at here at is in configuration parameters, we have the fiscal year, the starting month, the ending month and contracts. So on this side, we have the different reporting codes for sales, for returns, discounts, uh, the cost of goods sold, manufacturing and expenses. So now we will be using all of these uh, reporting codes and different configuration parameters that we see right here uh, in creating and you know populating these cells right here in this report. So let's begin. I'll quickly go ahead into the formula visit and we'll populate the first cell which is going to be under current month and revenue for under the sales field. We'll go ahead and use the formula visit. And then here we have the GL transactions. The field that we'll be using here would be ledger posting. And then this is something very interesting here that first of all, I'll quickly go ahead and show you uh, the sum operation which we'll be using here. And then we can further uh, use another feature which I'll be showing just right after that just to show you uh, the difference between sum and sum reversal. And then further into the configuration part of it, we'll be using uh, all these different fields that we just talked about before. So in the fiscal year, I simply go into my list and I make a selection for the fiscal year right from here. And then for the fiscal period, we can also set the range between this and the ending month. Also, one thing that I would like to do here is to just remove the dollar sign right in front of the, uh, the cell number, which is the cell G, because then we will be using this to populate the other cells as well with unique data. Similarly, I'll do the same thing for the periods. There we go. Then we also have the other fields. So we have filled in the fiscal year, fiscal period. Then we can go and fill the analytical dimension and which is contracts in this particular case. So I'll go ahead and choose the contracts, get rid of the dollar sign. And then also the other field that we have is the reporting code, which is on this side right here. So we're using the reporting code and filling in the field for sales because that cell is corresponding to the sales field right here. There we go. And for this particular one, I will remove the dollar sign from here. We can also set a ledger code, which is right here, just to be uh, filtering on uh, the ledger code NAS. And that's it. Now, just with a few clicks, we have our data right into the first cell which is negative uh, 3,490,000. So now this is what I was mentioning before. Now we are looking at the operation sum, but of course most of the revenues in the income statement reports usually show up as negative, but just in case we would want to uh, show these numbers as positive, that's when we use our operation and we can go back and quickly change it into sum reversal. So this 
tool and this feature comes very handy and avoids the need of actually getting it going in back into the formula and changing everything manually so we see just with one little option that we changed now we are seeing our data for sales in positive numbers and that's it uh, because we have already used and you know the deleted the dollar signs into the formula so it will be just as simple as dra dragging these cells right here and the fields will be getting populated automatically and then i can simply drag and drop this particular one right here and now as this report is getting populated we will also see it is taking quite some time the numbers are taking some time to populate and that is the reason because there are no reference configurations set for this particular uh, worksheet at this point so just to quickly show you what I exactly mean by that I will go ahead and control C and copy this into another field and I just wanted to copy this particular cell and let's put this right here so you're seeing that we are actually it's taking quite a few seconds to actually load the data into these cells but we can actually avoid this delay with the help of the reference configuration right here so once we choose that we have already a, a reference created which is gl detail transaction in this case so we can go into the edit option and then we can choose the fields which we would like to include in our configurations uh, so as to fasten up our reports so uh, in this particular example we will be having fiscal period fiscal year and then we also have the reporting code which we entered before which is right here and the analytical dimension which is analytical dimension 2 which is referring to our contracts I will also go ahead and choose account code this is because we I'll be using this particular field in the next report that we'll be creating so just doing it right now and that's it here we go now our configurations have been set in this particular field and the next time we use this formula and we copy and paste this for example it becomes really quick as you can see so this is a way to uh, help us not spend way too much time on waiting for the report to load and once these settings are configured it's very easy uh, and very quick to have the access to the data so I'm just populating some of these cells right here and as you can also see now the sales revenues are all in the positives and the costs are all negative uh, this is the reason why we actually did uh, the formula visit and then we changed the operation to some reversal I'll quickly go ahead and fill these cells okay so also we see that for miscellaneous there are no uh, we do not really have any um, reporting codes for miscellaneous in our demo example for example so in this case we will only be seeing the zeros and there we go and just a few more operations right here which are simple Excel operations for example total sales will just be equally the in fact the sum of this cell plus this cell these three cells right here and then we can simply drag and drop them right here this will be the sum of this cell plus this cell so just to give you an idea uh, it, we are just doing the regular operations of Excel which is simply copy and paste but the main point here was to uh, show you uh, the power of formula visit with a few clicks we have been able to extract the different uh, uh, data from the operations that we chose and then with the help of reference configuration we can fasten up our reports and uh, uh, you know make 
have the quick access to the data without having to wait uh, for too long to, for the report to load. So that was one part and then we can keep going on and uh, complete this report on income statement. The next thing uh, I would like to show and then once we are done with this as well, we can simply go back and retract these uh, parameters right here and we are actually ready with our income statement report right here. So that being done, I will now switch to the next report, which is the trial balance report. Now trial balance report again, we will be uh, creating this report from the scratch, but this time with the help of the tool data extraction. Now in the data extraction, we have the, pretty much the similar interface, which is also very easy because it just takes a few clicks to extract the data from the ERP. So what we do here, we simply go ahead and choose our data model from which we are extracting the data. We set our environment and then we choose the fields. So the first two fields that I'm going to populate are the account code and account description. Then we will choose the filters from this dimension settings part here. And that's again very easy for fiscal year. For fiscal year, we have it right there. We can trace it back to this cell. Then for fiscal period, we'll select uh, the period right here. And then for the ledger, we can also select the ledger code, which is right here. And I'm just wondering if I'm missing anything. All right, I think we are good. And then here we can simply also set the order. So setting the account code in let's say an ascending order and then showing the distinct records. We already have the headers in the report, so we do not need to show the headers. So I will not check that box there. And we also have the option to refresh the report or this data every time the workbook opens. So uh, this particular example, we are just working on it and we are not going to reopen it. So I will leave this uh, unchecked as well. So we go ahead and click on OK. And there we go. Now we actually have our account codes and with their account description, just the two different fields that we selected. In fact, it's extracted from the ERP uh, just in a matter of a few seconds. So we have them right here. Now we will start building our report with the help of formula visit. So for opening balance, we'll go back into the formula visit. We'll choose our reference. And here we uh, simply select the operation. So I will choose ledger posting. Operation will be the sum. And I will go ahead and select fiscal year. Fiscal period will be a range starting from zero to the previous period because it's an opening balance. So here we have the previous period. And then we also have the account code, which is going to be the first cell right here. But just because we also want to replicate uh, the same formula over the other cells and extract the data accordingly, I'll get rid of the dollar sign right here. And just in case, I will include the ledger code as well. Perfect. Click OK. And there we have the data for the opening balance. And the rest remains very simple. I simply double click on this and I have all my data for the opening balance just in a matter of a few seconds. And then we have the debit. Now things for debit are even easier. I simply copy and paste this formula from the opening balance and put it into my debits. Now I'll go back into the formula visit for this particular cell and I simply change my field to ledger debit. Operation will be sum and one tiny different uh, tiny uh, change that I will be making here is that fiscal period will now be the current period. All right, perfect. We now have our debits as well. And then I can simply uh, replicate this over the other cells too. There we go. And then for the credit, believe me, it's even easier than what we had in credit uh, in, in the debit. So we simply go back here. We copy this formula, paste this into the credits and open the formula visit and this time we will just be uh, we'll just have to change 
our field to credit. And there we go. So now we have the opening balance, debit, and credit. For the closing balance, we can use the formula visit back again, but it is just a very simple thing, which is we're just going to add the opening balance, debit, and credit together, put them together, so we can simply use the Excel formula itself, just the addition of these three cells. And that gives us the closing balance. Now, I can go ahead and drag this down and also the closing balance right here. And there we go. So now we actually have our trial balance report, which is ready. Now, what I would also like to mention here is that the list that we have just created right here is in fact a dynamic list. It is a dynamic list. Why do I say that? Because for example, uh, if I delete some of, if in case, you know, whenever it happens, if something gets, some of these roads actually get deleted, we have the option to do the data extraction refresh. And once we do that, then we have uh, all our rows which were deleted back again into the report. And also perhaps the new accounts or the new uh, the descriptions or the new numbers which could have been entered into our ERP system will also get refreshed and then uh, we'll see the most updated numbers in these reports. That is the reason why we say that this report is a dynamic one. Uh, I will just quickly show you how it is done. And this, uh, here's a quick trick uh, to, uh, which will actually be very helpful for us here too. So in this particular cell, which is also just a blank cell we see here, I will be using this little formula right here. Now that is done, I will simply drag and drop this one and I will copy and paste the exact formula right here. and also into this one. Perfect. So now we have this, I will show you what is the exact reason why I just did that. So what I'm going to do now is to just, let's say I'm going to delete these first two rows, for, uh, the last two rows right here, row 24 and 25. And we simply delete this. Okay, they are gone, but the next time I do the data extraction refresh in this worksheet, we will see that the ones that we just deleted are actually back into our report again. So that's exactly what I meant. And the reason why I added this formula right here was because it add, it acts as a link between the two cells, even if there is a space between them. So if in case we do not add this, so the numbers will not be showing in the other cells. So just to create the link between the two cells, this is a good trick and a good tip to, uh, you know, have the different cells talk to each other and also uh, retain the data and the information. So that's one thing that we uh, could definitely use uh, in case, you know, some data gets lost, then we can always go back into data extract refresh and get our data back. All right, so that was about creating a trial balance report. We have already seen how we have used the, in the formula visit to create an income statement. And then second report that was the trial balance report, we just created this report with the help of data extraction and also uh, again with the formula visit uh, so the power of these tools is definitely uh, worth mentioning because the reports do get loaded uh, very quickly and uh, just in a matter of a few seconds. Also, now the next report will be the sales report, which we will be creating with the help of pivot tables, which is also a tool which comes out of the box right here. So let's go ahead and create a sales report. For this, I'll be using the pivot table option here. I'll be going ahead and choosing my data model for this, which will be sales invoices. Um, just a moment, please.
all right this would be invoice sales there we go invoice analysis and then we choose the environment and then for the data models and the dimensions that we will be choosing in this particular case here uh, we already have the year which we'll be selecting from right this cell and we can also include the company code which can come from the cell right here perfect so and on the other side we can in fact dump all of this data and create a pivot report out of it now the advantage of using the pivot tables report is that it is it, it comes very very handy just in case uh, you are traveling uh, you are not in your office not connected to the internet all you have to do is exactly what we are doing here you choose your fields you dump all your data and then even when you're not having the access to the internet or you're offline you can still have the full access to the data we just are dumping in into our worksheet right now so it becomes very very handy i'll just go back here and uh, like i said like i just mentioned uh we can have the access to the, readily have the access to the data even when we are offline uh and then do our analysis on it without having the need to connect to the internet so i'll go ahead and choose the fields list and everything that we just dumped appears right here in the pivot table fields that we can see right here on the site so we'll be using these fields to simply drag and drop them into the pivot uh, items right here and then we'll be creating a sales report um, so let's do that I will go ahead and choose a month and put that into my columns and then for the rows I can go ahead and select sales reps sales reps into my rows let's also include the name and we can also choose ledger currency amount for example simply typing it in there we go and then adding it to my values perfect so here we now have a sales report uh, giving us information on uh, the sales reps their sales rep codes with all the different uh, sales numbers uh, over this span of different uh, periods right here now we have just created this report but then we can also make the use of this great feature which comes along with it uh, which is in fact the slicers so with the help of slicers we can in fact choose some of the fields and put them on this report to be used as very specific filters so here I'm using the company code okay and let's just also choose a quarter and let's say month as well so we are choosing these three different fields I click on OK and my three different individual slicers appear right here on the screen I can simply stack them together here we have them so company code we can simply expand because I believe there are more and for months we already have them here and there we go so it's just very simple it becomes really really simple I will just clear these filters here so if I want to just go ahead and look at the data for quarter one I simply click on quarter one and I that's all month one two and three for quarter one for quarter two it will be four five six within the these months I can also uh, you know specify which exact month I want to focus on let's say month five and then we have the information for five and then we can also make double selections too for five and six and then going into the company codes we can also simply select the company code and have the information only related to that company which is NA North America in this particular case and also the information on the sales rep so with the help of pivot tables we simply dump into the data into our Excel worksheets work on them even when we are offline or not connected to the internet and uh, just to show you why is it that so because if I go 
and switch off the online button right here. Let's say offline and any of the reports if I switch to them. And if I do the data extraction refresh, um, let's say in this one, we will be actually seeing this the message here that offline. So we are not having the access to this particular uh, worksheet because we have gone offline. But the sales report we just created, it does not get affected with the uh, whether we are offline or online. We can still have the access to uh, the data we just dumped in into the worksheets. So just to show you the practical example of it. And once we go back online, we can start working on these reports back again. And as you can see, the data reloads as soon as we go back online. Now, I would also like to show you here the formula drill down feature, which is also very, very handy to if in case we need to drill down on uh, the information. Uh, let's say sales revenue in this particular example. Here we have this formula drill down option. I go ahead and choose it. Then we also have the option, two different options. We can choose all fields or very specific fields. If I do specific fields, then I can simply choose and put them on this side and they will be appearing in my drill down. But then I also have to uh, have the option to choose these fields and save them for the later use. And then that's where we uh, define the different profiles. So this are the, these are the different profiles that we can save uh, for the later use. So let's say I go ahead and profile choose profile two. We already have some of the selections here. And once I click OK, then I have my drill down uh, report right here, giving me the information on sales, uh, ledger code NAS for the fiscal year two, and all the information relating to that in my drill down re report. So that way, profiles also becomes very, very handy just for the quick access just not to remember all the, all the fields every time, but just to keep uh, one's profile saved for the selections we make on a regular basis. Another thing I want to mention here is how we can use multiple formulas in the same cell. So right now, if I click on this particular cell, which is the revenue, we are having, uh, we can actually see this formula, which is in fact a big long formula, but then as you know, we just did not type this whole formula by ourselves. It's in fact uh, the Nectari solution, the formula wizard, which helped us with this. But this is one formula for this particular cell. However, we can also add multiple formulas and put the if conditions into these cells too. So for example, just to quickly show you what it means, I'll go ahead and define one cell as ledger because all this data is coming from the ledger posting. And then I will go ahead and choose this formula just for my reference. And then, sorry. And then I'll go ahead and delete this cell. Now I want to repopulate the data into this cell by using a new set of rules. I go into my insert function and I choose the if condition. And then it asks me what exactly would be my logic here. So. My logic would be if this cell, let's say, is equal to ledger, then I want to see the data coming from calculating my reports on the basis of ledger posting. But then just in case if it is not ledger, let's say if it is transaction, I will quickly go ahead and paste the same formula here, but I'm going to change the second formula just in a, just as the next step as you will see. So I click on OK, and the next time I go back into my formula visit, I have now two different options. The first one, of course, which is clearly the ledger posting formula, but the second one, we did not change it. So I can go ahead and click on OK, and here I can change my field, say, transaction posting. Choose my sum as sum reversal, and that's it. There we go. So now in this particular cell, as compared to the other ones, we now have two different formulas in this cell based on the if condition. So right now we are having the ledger as the entry in the cell. 
but what if I change this ledger into uh, something say let's say transaction or anything other than ledger so right now just we will remember this no number here which is three million four hundred and ninety thousand I'll quickly go ahead and make the changes to this this cell here and there we go and now with the formula that we just created now the fields numbers have changed to three million four hundred and seventy one thousand if I change it back to ledger we will see the difference so there is clearly a difference of twenty one thousand uh, dollars in this particular field right here so we can include the if conditions in these cells and again it is very simple we just use the formula visit back again giving us diff different options to choose from and you can add as many different uh, conditions uh, you might want to see in this there we go so that was one very important tip that uh, that was worth mentioning here and there are a few more things I would like to show here I already have a demo report for example um, just as a revenue versus cost report but what I want to show through you through this report is in fact how we can uh, link to the Nectaris web application and the different views within the application uh, from the numbers right here on this report so let's say I go ahead and choose the sales revenue and the amount opening balance right here I go ahead and choose the fields on the tool right here which is the open view and then it gives me the option which exact view would I like to open let's say posting by product line and then this particular tool this option takes me directly into the web application of Nectari and then uh, it will show me the chart or the view which is related to these numbers on this report There we go. So here we have this view right here, uh, which is in fact, as we can clearly see, a view within the Nectari application. We have uh, these um, post transaction posting for different uh, sectors, wholesale, retails, and uh, many others. And then we also have the same functionality in this view. In fact, we can just uh, zoom it and then we also have the group section here if you would uh, like to add more fields here we have the full functionality within this view we can also do the drill down for example so all the options are available uh, through this tool which is the open view right here so that way we can link our numbers within the Excel to the Nectari application too all right, so we saw how we could simply create an income statement report and did not take long to this create this report uh, which in fact just a few minutes with the help of formula visit then we saw how we could use the trial balance uh, we could create this report with the help of the data extraction and formula visit and then we also created a sales report filtered on it with the help of different slicers and uh, that too with the help of pivot tables So now I will leave the floor open for any questions. If you have, please feel free to ask any questions. And I believe that I actually have a few questions here. So the first question is are there any new v9 features well most of the features do remain the same but what has definitely uh, improved is the performance of these reports um, 
we also have created you know there have been minor changes in uh, the different uh, different tools uh, within these different reports reporting tools but that being said the the whole major outline outline of the uh, features do remain the same Please feel free to ask more questions if you have any. All right, I also have one more question, which is how does the link to formula work? So it's the link to formula. I'm glad that you actually noticed this one right here, which is uh, the link to formula right here. So this link to formula, this is an options in, in fact, uh, helps us to link to the different applications so it could be sage sage x3 for example it could be uh your other, any other erp from which the data be, is being extracted if you want to simply switch to that application uh but this could also be anything else but for example uh if you want to track down your deliveries uh using fedex or some other the you know delivery uh delivery web application. So you can simply switch to those as well. We also have uh, the ability to connect to Google search engine as well. So in literally anything, so it only use the hyperlink and you can use this particular field here uh, to put in the hyperlink and simply clicking on that, it takes you directly into that application. So that is the use of link to formula. What happens in open view is in fact is also uh, an example of link view because once we click on open view we are uh, provided with a few of op various options uh, to connect to the different views within Nectari because also it is specific to Nectari of uh, application. Uh, but that being said uh, link to also works on the similar principles. Can you now use wildcards in the parameters? Example A star to show everything uh, beginning with A. Uh, um, that particular question, I will definitely have to uh, get back to you on that one. I can uh, make a note of this question and uh, we'll make sure that we come back to this, uh, we come back to you with this particular uh, question if you could also uh, simply email us uh, We'll be because we then we'll in that case. We will also have your contact information and Then we can get back to you with the response on that Also for the other questions if you have any please feel free to simply email to info I will just type it in right here. Let me just quickly type in for you That is the email address that you can simply uh, send your questions into info at tangerinesoftware.com and uh, that way we'll also be having uh, your contact information to get back to you and uh, along with the responses. I'm just seeing if I'm missing anything in terms of the questions being asked or anything that I want to cover in this report in this particular webinar. So I'll just give one more minute to um, check if you have any other questions. But if you do have any other questions, you can please also uh, email us at info at tangerinesoftware.com.
there's a question on not regarding this webinar but that last one how did you embed a view to the PowerPoint all right um, so we actually have an application within PowerPoint uh, which actually is a an application uh, which is provided through uh, Microsoft I'm just recollecting the name of that particular uh, admin that we see and also my session is on recording right now because I, that's the reason I only can see the recording part here but it comes into the add-ins here um, if you could also type in your uh, your contact information please I'll be more than happy to get back to you uh, in the whole procedure of how to embed that somebody just said that they are using Nectari 8.1.5 one five uh, so that is quite an older version so I would advise you uh, to update your Nectari version to the newer version uh, because the version 9 this is the whole Nectari webinar series has been on version 9 and uh, it has already been out so please go ahead and contact your account manager and uh, we'll be more than happy to uh, help you with the update All right, so that will be it for today's session. I have got the uh, the email contact information as well, and I believe this was related to the question which was asked for the PowerPoint. I'll make a note of it, and uh, we'll get back to you uh, right away after this session. But like I said, you know, please, if you do feel have have any other questions, feel free to reach out to us, and uh, I'll be more than happy to uh, get back to you on these. And at last, I would like to thank each one of you for being with us, for staying with us, and for all your interest in Nectari webinar series. And thank you so much uh, for joining us throughout this whole experience of Nectari webinar series. And we'll be coming back again with uh, a new webinar series shortly. Uh, and, but again, would like to th give you a big thank you um, for all your support. And uh, yes, thank you so much and looking forward to see you all again. And have a great day ahead. Thank you.